All right, we're picking steaks at Sam's Club, and uh, we're looking for a nice uh, ribeye cap on the steak muscle, like so. The uh, Spinaralis Dorsi, this one is a little bit broken. This one here, we have a nice marbling here. This one's pretty good also. Looking for the uh, marbling and the fattiness on the uh, Spinaralis Dorsi, which is the ribeye cap. That's the one that you want to be picking when you compete. This one looks very good. Look at this one here. So, very nice ribeye cap here. And uh, this one has one good piece. The second one's not so good. Kind of looks like this one's the best one. Nice uh, marbling on the ribeye cap right here. And this is a, a one and a quarter inch, uh, 16 ounces. So it's about, uh, let's see here, 2.24 pounds. So it's about a pound for each steak. Hey folks, it's Harry from Sempadetti Barbecue. Today I'm going to take you through a steak cooking tutorial to show you some black belt tips and tricks of cooking the perfect steak. I'm headed out to Texas in a few weeks to cook a steak cookers association contest where there's going to be some heavyweight steak world champions. So I need to really up my game. I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks of how you cook a competition steak to wow some certified judges. We're going to cook a steak and sear it perfectly so that it has a medium warm pink center. In my practice run, I'm going to use uh, Angus Beef Steak. Uh, the specification for the Software Cookers Association rules is that it's got to be a steak that's about 16 ounces, about one and a quarter inch. And uh, I purchased this uh, ribeye steak boneless from Sam's Club. A few of the ingredients that you will need is basically a, a good beef rub, uh, some, some kind of marinade. I like to use Head Country marinade, which re really gives it a super umami flavor. A little bit of accent to make the flavors pop. A secret ingredient here from Butcher Barbecue, my friend Dave Busca. He's got a phosphate tenderizer that will do wonderful things to your steak. I put some of the Butcher Phosphate TR into a shaker bottle to shake on a steak. We've got our rosemary brush with uh, my signature butter. Uh, and we've got a very key ingredient here, is which is the uh, grill grates uh, by... Brad Barrett, and uh, this is the indispensable tool to create the beautiful grill marks on your steak. You can win a contest without having grill marks. It's not mandatory, but I think that the steak really looks pretty. And uh, we're going to show you guys how we do the X-Flip method to get a perfect char mark on your steaks. Steak Cookers Association contests are fun to do because you don't really need a lot of equipment and it pays $1,000 for the first place together with uh, money up to 10 places depending on the size of the contest. You need very little equipment and uh, you can cook on gas, you can cook on wood, you can cook on pellets, you can cook on pretty much anything you want. When you go at attend a contest, the first thing you need to do is you get your steaks, which is provided by the promoter. In this case, I'm simulating it that uh, I picked two steaks from the uh, promoter through a poker chip draw. Among the two steaks here, the one that I want to focus my attention on is basically this rib cap here, this piece here. That's where the judges are probably going to be taking their cuts from to eat. Uh, so between these two steaks, if I were in a uh, contest and I ended up with these two, this one obviously is a better one, I would say, for the turn-in. This would be the second steak I would get for the contest. And I would uh, basically cook this one as a taster piece to get this one right. So under the pit conditions, I can tune my exact timing so that I can get this steak done perfectly. So I'm going to show you how I trim the steaks. The first thing is to prep it so that uh, you have this kind of heel end here. Uh, you don't really need that, so I will trim this off. So, and uh, I'm just going to focus on the part that the judges will eat. Uh, I've been a judge on a Steak Cookers Association contest and uh, eaten my way through 45, 50 steaks at one sitting. So. I just want to focus on the part where the judges will be eating. So I'm carefully trimming around the steak to save the best part for the judges, which is basically going to be the rib cap, which is right here, this, this muscle here. I'm going to trim off any excess fat, like so, so that when the judges bite into it, they're not going to get a mouthful of fat. But if the fat is nice and soft and marble, I'll leave it on, and this part is okay. Same here, there's a little bit of uh, fat here. I'm gonna trim this off. So in a real contest, you're not gonna get two perfect steaks because you're gonna have to go through a poker chip draw. So if there's gonna be like 50 teams, they draw a poker chip from one to 50. So if you draw number one, you are first in line to pick. 
But if you're number one, then you, in the second round, you are the last person. So that way it's fair. If you're the last person, you get the first pick in the second round. And uh, even though in a 50-person contest, there's going to be much many more than 50 stakes. So you get your pick to pick the best stake that you can see. So I'll trim it all the way around. It looks pretty good. Just a little bit more here. And this one's ready to go. I'm going to trim the second piece now. Same idea. My strategy is to cook two steaks. One is for the judges and one is for tasting so that I can kind of fine tune the uh, cooking process and the cooking temperature and time so that I can get a medium warm pink center, which is the requirement. And uh, the judges are given a particular photograph of how they should score a eight versus a nine versus a 10. So if you want to score a 10 on the appearance score, you really need to make sure that you cook it so that it has a warm pink center. There's five different criteria that you are judged on and I'll cover them as uh, the cook progresses. We're trimming off all the excess fat here on the edge. So, and really the, the part that I need to focus on is not so much on the back here, but really on the front where spinach dorsi here, right here. This is the part that they're just gonna eat. And this is that muscle here, right here. So this is the, the, the backup one. The, the one I'm gonna turn in is gonna be this one. Looks hard, turn it off. Here are the trim steaks and I've trimmed away all the excess fat around this uh, ribeye cap. And the same one with the second one here on this side, trim up pretty much all of it. And uh, here's the file of fat left behind. Obviously when you're doing this at home for your fam friends and family, you probably won't trim it so dramatically, but this is for a contest. So the, the goal is to win, not for the yield that you're gonna be able to serve. My uh, seasoning process uh, begins with a little sprinkle of Head Country Marinade. Give it a little bit of umami flavor, like so. And uh, I'm gonna apply a little bit of uh, butcher phosphate to make it plump and have uh, retain moisture. It's also got a, a tenderizer in speaker ingredient in here. I'm just gonna sprinkle a light coating on it so. All right, a very light coating of uh, some uh, accent flavor enhancer. And let the meat soak in that marinade that we just put on. Apply a Nice coat of Slap Your Daddy, my uh, Moolah Beef Wrap, uh, one first place USA in the sirloin and brisket category. It's got a whole bunch of uh, special ingredients in there, including Worcestershire powder, it's got shiitake mushroom powder, and a whole bunch of umami stuff in it. Just a light coat like so, not too much. And when you put the rub on, you'd want to do it a little higher so that uh, you know it doesn't blotch up on the uh, meat. Probably six to eight inches high. Just a little bit of rub here. And you can see that the uh, Head Country uh, marinade has soaked into the meat. Pat it down gently. Flip it over. So, a little bit more marinade on the back side. So, a little bit more of the phos Butcher Phosphate TR. So, a little bit of accent for flavor and a little bit of slap your daddy rub and we're gonna let this sit and uh, get happy for about 45 minutes all right we're gonna let it rest in a cool place cover it with foil let it sit for about 45 minutes to one hour for the flavors to penetrate the meat all right, our uh, smoker is set for 275, so we're gonna do a smoke followed by a sear on the grill grates. The smoker is nice and hot. I'm gonna put the uh, steaks to kind of smoke until the internal temperature is around 110 degrees. The steak have been marinating in the fridge for about 45 minutes to an hour so that the marinade and the seasonings all are able to penetrate the meat. <laughs> Here, 
eight. That's good enough. So we're gonna pick pull it now, and we're gonna sear it. Warm to the touch. It's got a little bit of smoke. It's exactly what you want to do. So this is ready to be seared on a grill grates now. Ribeye steaks are cooked to about 110 degrees, and we're moving on to phase two, which is to sear it on the grill grates. All right, we're moving to the grilling phase now. I've got my grill grates ready to go. They're heating up, and uh, I have my uh, butter ready to go. I've got my steak fat to clean the grill grates. I've got my uh, steak smoked to about 100 degrees, 110 internal temperature. I'm gonna measure the temp now. And I want to measure, use the laser to measure right where the ridge is. And I want the ridges to be about 550 or oh, 500 degrees. 585, I want it to be, I don't know to get past 600. 604, 636, 625. Hold on, this side, I want the grades all to be very even. These are small details, but very, very important to try to get the best results. Here, 45, 58, 575, 650, 630. So I'm going to adjust the burner here. It's a little too hot. All right, I'm uh, calibrating uh, the heat here. Let's see here. It's 556. I don't want the temperature on the bottom, I want the temperature on the ridges because that's where the steak will be touching. So I want to try to get at least 550 to 600. Nine, we're about ready. So I'm gonna grease, grease a piece of uh, fat. Alright, I'm going to put my test piece on first, uh, I can start a clock, ready, I'm put it down this way, right here, about 2 o'clock, and okay, we're going to wait about a minute, before we flip it, over, in the same 2 o'clock position, around 60 seconds, coming up, I've got my special tool here to lift it up, 57, 58, 59, and 60, gently lift it up, more. Alright, I've let the steak cool down so that the uh, muscle in the middle is uh, below 130 or so. So I'm going to do a taste, a cut test now. And uh, this is what the judges will do. They will cut the down the uh, muscle here. So here's the ribeye cap right here. So they will take a cut right through here. Alright. And right down from the rib cap, cut right down the center here. And it's got to be a warm, medium, pink center. And so this one is a little underdone. So this is the test stick. So what I need to do now is the real one, I just need to increase it. So 60 seconds was not long enough. So what I need to do is make an adjustment to cook it so that it's a little bit less pink. So this would not rate a 10 on the look. This will rate, probably rate an 8, so this, the scale of 8, 9, and 10, you've got to get it perfectly pink, medium, 
pink warm center. I'm gonna now taste the uh, the uh, one the Jedis are gonna eat, which is the uh, rib cat mussel right here. And the Jedis will typically cut pieces from here. And on the rib cap, it's a little under, so I need to cook it longer. So this vouches my theory that the 60 seconds on wasn't enough. I can go taste it, take, take a piece and try it now. All right. So it's a little pink, but let's give it a taste test. Good flavor, very juicy, very tender. So the butcher phosphate tenderizer really works. It's very nice and tender. You can see how tender this thing is. Very juicy. So now we have a test piece done. We're ready now to cook the real one for the judges. So we're ready to do the real one now because there was a test one. So this is the real one for the judges. So I'm going to tune it so that I'll cook it a little longer because that one was just a 7 on the uh, doneness scale. We're going to get to a 10. Same process as before. With all the grates. So we want to verify that the grate is at the right temperature. So we're looking at about 600 degrees, this is 627, right on the grate it's itself, not on the bottom but on the ridge itself. So I'm going to set it down carefully, put it down in the 2 o'clock position like so. And then what we need to do is we need to press it down just gently so that the sear marks will sear. So this is another black belt trick, I'll show you guys. And let's keep it there. And now we start the clock for 60 seconds. And I think that because it wasn't so done, I'm going to go about maybe 75 seconds instead of 60 seconds for a perfect sear. Alright, 1 minute and 10 seconds. Ready to flip it. Cut. Get over to the 2 o'clock position. Okay. Alright, so the steak is ready. We're checking the internal temperature, it's cooled down to 120, so that's ready to cut. So the way it's judged is they the judges will do one cut, the, the official will cut right around the center here. And we're shooting for a medium warm pink center. And this one is a lot better. So that, in my opinion, is a 10. The earlier one on the test was a 7, 8. So it's basically judged as a 7, 8, 9, 10. And then, so if it's overcooked, it's gray, it becomes an, a 9. So it goes from 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 9, 8, 7. So this is perfectly cooked. So you can see here, warm, medium, pink center. So I needed to go one minute and about 15 seconds to get it to be perfectly pink. And this is the SCA standard for a number 10. You're judged on many criteria, including flavor. I think there's five criteria to be judged, but this one is the most important one, which is the perfectly pink, warm center. So the judges are not going to eat this piece, so the judges are going to eat this, this spinellus muscle here. So I'm going to... Pretend like I'm a, a judge. I'm gonna eat this muscle like so, and they actually cut it with a plastic fork, and they take a bite. I end up eating uh, 75 steaks in one of the judging several judging contests in one sitting. So we'll take a look at this one. So they don't judge this for looks; they judge it for flavor. But the the the, the looks is judged based on this thing. This is a, definitely a, a ten. This is absolutely perfect. We'll do a taste test on the uh, piece here. Beautiful pink, also perfect. Look at that. I'm gonna take a nice big bite out of it now. Mmm. Burst of flavor in your mouth. Super juicy. Right amount of saltiness. All that flavor. Super tender using that uh, butcher's uh, phosphate TR. So, a little bit of uh, accent. Step it there you up. 
soaking it for about maybe about an hour before we cooking it. So there you have it. State Cookers Association. Hopefully first place State Cookers Association champion in Texas in a few weeks. So we'll see how it goes. I have done one practice session and I may do a couple more to get ready for the big contest in Texas. So per steak perfectly cooked, according to the SCA guidelines, warm, medium pink in the center. I hope you guys like this video. I had a lot of fun making it. So if you like it, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you guys in the next video. It looks like I'm all ready for my steak contest, but I'm a perfectionist, so I'll probably be cooking one or two more practice steaks before I head out to Texas.